Hello everybody! Jack here, and today I got another Valheim video. I've been having a lot of fun building this base right next to the Mistlands, and I've learned about a perfect sweet spot so that you won't get wrecked by the Mistlands mobs, but when you're building and mining, you have to be a little bit careful and you might sometimes aggro a Zhao and have to run him into the Black Forest to survive and keep him away from your base. And for me, that is where Valheim shines. So how far away do you have to be to be safe? So I'm going to start by talking about the edge of the base and mining, because mining is the loudest thing. So I'm going to use it as an example. How far away from the Mistlands do you have to be to be like mine and be safe? And it's basically around this far. But don't be tricked, because you see how far away that Mistlands is? If I go up here and I start mining this rock, there's some Mistlands up there in a higher elevation that's way closer. So I'm just using this to help you visualize how far the edge of your base needs to be from the Mistlands to be near it without being attacked by its enemies, okay? So here is the border. We have four meters, eight meters. So I would say a safe edge is 30 meters away from the border of the Mistlands. Now, if you want to learn more about having a base near the Mistlands and what to do when you do aggro enemies, then continue watching. I'll get more into it there. Yeah. So inevitably you will aggro enemies. And if you think you can just build this close without having a plan for when that happens, you're gonna be disappointed. You need to react very quickly when you see that an enemy is getting close to your base because they're going to attack crafting benches and chests. And enemies like the Zhao see from the sky. So anything that's under a house is actually protected from them unless you go there. The Zhao isn't going to shoot your roof unless you put like a chest on your roof or there's a chest like right here that the Zhao can see. So when you aggro, you need to have an area that you can run away to, okay? We got some issues. That looks like seeker activity right there. That troll is dead. I don't know what- oh no, he's still there. Ah, uh, yeah, see, see, what, see what's going on here? That's all you need to do, but I do not want to run towards the base now. Perfect example, I'm being chased by monsters. So you want like a path away from the base, right? So we're going to show you how you kind of deal with him. He's basically on a leash, and as long as you pay attention to his movements, and there's only one of them and you're in an open area, then you'll always be able to be fine. You just have to pay attention. But if you lose eye contact with the Seeker, you stop looking at it, something distracts you, another enemy, then you're just going to die, right? When you die is because you get stuck on like a rock or something like that. And we're just going to take this guy, he's going to keep following us, and we're gonna go until we get to the plains, which is right over here. Should be pretty close now. It's kinda hard to pay attention to the path when the Seeker's chasing me, huh? Here we are now! Ah, <laughs> classic! <laughs> right, well, there you go. He's safe from our base and now he'll fight that mosquito. And he's not gonna come all the way back, probably. <laughs> Valheim's one of the few games that I've played that I can genuinely say has made my life better. I had no idea I could be as creative as I can be, but this game helped me unlock my creativity, and then that bled into the real world, and now I garden, I plant, and I build things, and when I do stuff, I think of this game. I remember the experiences I had drawing little things in Valheim, and then trying to build them, and seeing what would go wrong, and never before had I had that kind of experience in a way where the game bled into my real life and helped me heal. It was beautiful, and I'd much rather support Iron Gate than Blizzard. I used to play WoW, but I've given up on them. When you give money to Blizzard, all you're doing is supporting sexual abuse. You're supporting people who take advantage, not only of their employees, but also the very people who play their games. We are supporting a very corrupt system by paying these people. It doesn't matter what you complain about. When you give them money, they abuse you, and they abuse it. But Iron Gate? <laughs> Come on, it's beautiful. You can tell. You can just see how the game plays. This 
is how games should be. You know? All right, everybody. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate your time, effort, and attention, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Buddy, if you're interested in more Valheim content, then check out Valhemians. It's an awesome fan website that has loads of great builds and interesting information about Valheim. I also post a text article to the website every time I post one of these videos. And also, you can check out a dedicated server. If you want to set up your own dedicated server, then check out the video on the screen right now. It's a great way for you to play with your friends and also support me if that's something you're interested in, because I'll get a percentage of whatever you spend on your dedicated server. Normally, dedicated servers range from $16 to $20 per month, and this fee can be split between the friends that you play together, and it's a quite an affordable way to game, especially with something as beautiful as Valheim. 